Have you ever wondered how you can start a record label from scratch? And I know you probably watched a bunch of YouTube videos, but they haven't given you the exact answer. Well, on this episode, I'm going to break down from my experience, my detailed viewpoint for starting a record label from scratch. Find out next coming up on the Music Money Makeover Show. What is going on, everybody? Welcome back to the Music Money Makeover Show. My name is Casey Graham, and as usual, you know you can find all of my materials for download down in the links below the video. As, uh, as always, please make sure you like, comment, and subscribe to these videos, as I'm quite sure you will see a lot more on the channel that you will like. So in order to keep coming back, please subscribe. All right, so let's jump into today's topic of how to start a record label from scratch. All right, I got a couple points I want to hit on on this thing, so let's go in. The first point is the LLC. I like to do things right. Now, when I first started out with building a record label, I did not build, I did not register my company with my Secretary of State. And for those of you all who are international viewers, um, mainly speaking from a United States standpoint, but you can register your business at your state's Secretary of State office or do it online. And I like to start with the LLC not an incorporation, especially if you're a small ran company or a one or two member company, go with the LLC. You won't have to worry about the board members and the stockholders and, and all that stuff. Start with the LLC. This will help you with your tax structure and then your bank account information and all that stuff down the line. So once you get that underway, go ahead and seek out an attorney, right? And this is not for my, this is, I'm speaking on this from the record label perspective, not so much the artist perspective, all right? So in your second step, you wanna seek out that attorney and that attorney will be used to structure your business, not so much from a tax perspective, but on how you will take in artists and income and then dish it out as well in your payment system, okay? Because we're not like a brick and mortar business where we're just gonna have, you know, uh, we're going to sell a product. We're going to take in money. We'll pay our taxes on it, and then we'll 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 you know do our tax forms. No, we have a lot of things that we have to work out when it comes to royalties and payment times and dates and all of that. So you got to go to the attorney for that. This is before you get the artist. All right, before that, you want to have an idea of how you're going to pay out these people that you're going to sign. All right, we're building a record company from scratch here. And so in order to do that, we got to have some money, right? So we had a little money to set up the business and to get the attorney and, and meet with the attorney and get our business structure together. But now we got to have some money or some resources in position to produce our master recordings, right? So as you, the record company will be producing these recordings, you'll be going into the studio with the producers or at least paying for this time, the studio time, the get to get the rights to the production, you have to pay for that and then so on and so on. The songwriters, this, that, and the third. You gotta have money for that. And if you don't have money for that, then you gotta have time for that and a means to barter, all right? So hopefully you do have the money. I would put a lot of money into this because on our next step, when it comes to marketing, you're gonna have to have the time and the money for the marketing, okay? So the reason why you gotta have both, especially if you're a startup, is because you're, some of the know-how will come from the artist. Like you have to know your artist to know how to market for them. And every artist will not be the same. Nobody is cookie cutter. And I don't care if it's the same genre of music, nobody is cookie cutter because everybody is unique in their own right. They may sing or rap different. They may dress different. They obviously look different. They may live in different regions and have different dialects. So it's, you're gonna to have to custom make a marketing plan for this artist when you get them on board. So having money and time available in the marketing department to learn your artists and market for them correctly will be a key thing for you. So let's go back over what we talked about. We talked about getting an LLC and that'll set up our tax structure. We talked about talking to the attorney and that will set up our business structure to take money in and the dish money out. We talked about having money and time available in place to produce our master recordings, bringing the songwriters to producers and artists and paying for studio time and all this stuff. Got to have that available. All right. And then we also talked about having the money and time available for the marketing that you're going to have to do to, and make it custom for the artists that you're going to sign. And then lastly 
is the artist. So now that you have an idea of these things and you have a few of these in place and you have, you know, okay, I have my, my money and my resources for my production and I have my money and my resources for my, my marketing and I have my contract in place and I have my company set up, I'm now ready to sign my first artist. Now it's not gonna be a smooth ride, but at least when you get the artist on board, you have something ready to go other than saying, uh, I wanna start a record company and I wanna sign an artist. Because most people, and here's where I'm gonna go on a little tangent, most people sign the artist or wanna sign the artist first. They don't even have the company together. But then when they sit down with the attorney, the attorney will say, well, what's the company? How, how are you signing? Oh, then you say, well, I don't have that. So now I have to go back and get the company, make sure the artist is still on board and they don't go run off to somebody else and then come back to the table with the attorney and then the artist has to go get their attorney and then you all sit down and negotiate your contracts together. So it's best for you to have your business, your attorney, your money and your resources, or at least your starting capital and your resources in place so that when you bring the artists on, you have them in and they don't go running off to this person or that opportunity or that opportunity while you, you are negotiating because negotiating takes some time. Anyway, that's been today's episode. Don't forget to download the Profit Maximization Checklist down below and the Musician's Guide to Self-Publishing right down below in the links below this video. Like, comment, and subscribe, and I will see you all next week right here on the Music Money Makeover Show. Peace.